If you're looking for another conspiracy theory video, this isn't it. What we're going to be focusing on here is facts, not wild speculation. It's appeared in thousands of Twitter hashtags, it's been trending on Facebook and YouTube, and on sites known for more extremist views. And with many of those posts containing some pretty far-out claims, it's easy to lose sight of what the Great Reset actually is, which is why we thought we'd focus on that today. Number 1. It's a proposal by the World Economic Forum to make business fairer and greener. Cutting out all the hype and conspiracy theories, and that's what it is, a proposal by the World Economic Forum. That's the organization of business leaders who meet up in Davos every year. According to their mission statement, they aim to improve the state of the world by engaging business, political, academic, and other leaders of society to shape global, regional, and industry agendas. In May 2020, they published an article arguing that the pandemic provided an opportunity to reset and reshape the global economy in a way that works better for people and the planet. To reduce poverty, to make sure tech gets used so everyone can benefit, and to make industry greener. And the title was The Great Reset. And speaking of some of the most pressing issues, let's just take a minute to remind you that we cover quite a few of them here at Alux. So to stay in the loop, be sure to hit that subscribe button if you haven't already for more quality content every day. Number 2 some healthy skepticism is justified. To be fair, you don't have to be a tinfoil hat-wearing nutjob to be a little skeptical about what it is. Sure, the aims sound great, but a lot of people have reasonably pointed out the WEF is an exclusive club of super wealthy business leaders. Their membership costs north of $67,000 a year. Yep, yeah, it's that exclusive. Not that we are criticizing them for being rich, that's not what we do at Alux. But when it comes to talking about how the world's going to move forward, it's fair to be a little concerned that, well, the WEF are pretty far removed from representing the world's population, and that, just maybe, their stated mission to fix those problems could be more about repairing their own image after effing up the environment in the first place. Sounds a little left-wing for a luxury channel like Alux? Well, even Forbes agrees. Check out John Malden's article, where he says the Great Reset probably won't actually do very much, but it's more likely another example of wealthy, powerful elites saving their conscience with faux efforts to help the masses. Number 3. But some theories about it go far beyond fact. Like we said, being skeptical of the World Economic Forum is fair enough, but when anti-lockdown protesters and bloggers start talking about a global elite using the pandemic to roll out radical policies like forced vaccinations, digital ID cards, and even giving up private property, well, you're free to say those things, but if you want us to take you seriously, at least give us some evidence. Like claims the virus doesn't even exist. Well, healthcare professionals kinda disagree with you on that one and we think that of all the people, they should know. Or that vaccines contain microchips to keep track of you. Hello? Those already exist, like, in your phone. Theories like these often talk about the Great Reset as an attempt to reorganize the world economy at the expense of ordinary people and create totalitarian regimes while pretending to do the opposite. And what makes them seem so far out isn't that they sound, well, far out, but simply that they don't have a shred of evidence to back anything up. Number 4. But more and more people are taking them seriously. The worrying thing is, theories like these aren't limited to the loons on the fringes of society. They're becoming more and more widespread in the mainstream. Case in point, in October last year, a survey found that an alarming number of people believe the COVID-19 fatality rate has been greatly exaggerated and believe it was either created on purpose, has killed far fewer people than reported, or just plain doesn't exist. 38% of Americans believe that, and so did 28% of Germans. Countries with even higher figures include Greece, where 46% suspect it's a hoax, and in Nigeria, where that figure is 59%. Number 5. Theories like these spread fast on the internet. 
and they're being spread by people from all corners, some which you wouldn't really expect, like an archbishop. The Anti-Defamation League mentions conspiracy theories spread by Catholic Archbishop Carlo Maria Vigano, who wrote back in October that a global plan created by the Great Reset is underway. Its architect is a global elite that wants to subdue all of humanity, imposing coercive measures with which to drastically limit individual freedoms and those of entire populations. Number 6. And ideas like these go back well before the pandemic. Hearing of theories of so-called reptilians? Yep, yeah, theories like those are coming into the mix here. Just in case you haven't heard of this one, it's the idea that many world leaders are in fact blood-drinking, flesh-eating lizards disguised as humans, and that they've been doing this kind of thing for a long time, like they engineered 9-11. We know a lot of you have heard this stuff before, but if you haven't, we promise we didn't make it up. Check out this link. Number 7. The World Economic Forum doesn't even have any authority over governments. Keep this in mind if you're making claims about how the WEF is taking over the world. The fact is, they can't just tell governments what to do. Unlike, say, the UN or the IMF, which are made up of governments who have to play by the rules that are set, the WEF isn't like that. It's basically a club of super rich people who come up with ideas, and yes, they do have influence, but despite what some people think, they can't and simply don't order around governments. Number 8. The theories really started when Justin Trudeau mentioned the word reset at the UN. When the WEF first mentioned the Great Reset in May, it didn't even cause that much of a buzz. November was when the theories really took off when Canadian Prime Minister Justin Trudeau made a speech at the United Nations and used the R word, causing Twitter to go insane. Things he actually said were, the pandemic has provided an opportunity for a reset, and this is our chance to accelerate our pre-pandemic efforts to reimagine economic systems that actually address global challenges like extreme poverty, inequality, and climate change. To be honest, it sounds pretty reasonable, but somehow it led to the Great Reset trending on Twitter with 80,000 tweets in a single day. A lot of those tweets claim that Trudeau is somehow at the bidding of the WEF in their plan for world domination, which seems quite a bit less reasonable, especially if they're basing it entirely on Trudeau choosing to use the word reset. Not exactly an uncommon word, is it? However, Number 9. The Great Reset does actually have some pretty bad PR. Which is surprising when you consider how much funding the WEF has to spend on it. A lot of people pointed out that the videos do come across as kinda cheesy, even hypocritical, as the WEF are big business and at least partly to blame for the problems they're talking about. Not to mention that Prince Charles is doing the commentary for the video, which is sure to get the tinfoil hat brigade talking. They're already convinced he's a reptilian. The point is, bad PR is never a good thing but it's extra unfortunate in this case because it's led to more people believing some totally unfounded theories. Number 10. The Great Reset is big on green infrastructure investments. Okay, let's go back to what the Great Reset actually says. Even if it's long and confusing, probably the biggest point it makes is that we need to encourage green investments, specifically when governments make a recovery stimulus. In other words, print a load of money to make the handouts and keep the economy going. Those handouts have to include green conditions. Encouraging green solutions has got to be a good thing. It's hard to disagree with that part, but it's not necessarily all good. Here at ALUX, we've said before that when governments print money like crazy, we're we're all going to have to pick up the bill somehow, often with inflation. Check out our video on 15 reasons why money is becoming worthless. Number 11. It's also big on carbon pricing cutting down on emissions. We believe that anything that leads to less reliance on oil, coal, and gas for energy and less emissions being pumped into the atmosphere has got to be a good thing, and it's got to happen sooner or later. It's also true that if you're convinced there's a global conspiracy behind the coronavirus, then you're probably easy to convince that global warming also isn't a thing. Hint. Listen to the climate scientists. 97% of them say climate change is happening. Number 12. The Great Reset is big on the fourth industrial revolution. 
In other words, AI and the Internet of Things, retraining and upskilling in these is another pillar of the Great Reset, and the way these technologies are developing, these kinds of changes are sure to happen. Some jobs, like shop staff, are going to become obsolete, while others, like AI programmers, are going to take off exponentially. Which means a suggestion like this makes perfect sense. Not that you should read into some wacky theory about elites creating a race of cyborgs. Number 13. It's also big on remote work. The Great Reset says the future of work is largely remote, and we need to make sure the technology is in place to speed up the transition from working in offices to remote. Again, hard to argue with. The pandemic has shown us that we don't need to spend hours in traffic commuting to and from work, and that companies don't need to spend millions on renting office space. Making sure things are in place for remote work to run more smoothly is going to mean more efficiency and more time spent doing things that are actually valuable to us. Number 14. It is a fact that over the pandemic, the poor have gotten poorer and the rich have gotten richer. Let's wrap up about how these theories spread so easily. Yep, the rich are getting richer and the poor are getting poorer sounds like a cliché, but it is happening. Billionaires did get richer in the pandemic, and the poorest sectors of society suffered the most. And it is impossible to even try to argue it's a good thing. However, is that evidence that global elites were behind COVID to make themselves richer? Of course not. What it does point to is the fact there are parts of our global economy that are in desperate need of fixing. Number 15. Put it all together, and unfortunately, you've got fertile ground for conspiracy theories. There's a virus, even if some people don't believe it exists. It leads governments to impose lockdowns to stop deaths, and the ripple effect of that is that wealth is transferred from the poor to the rich. Of course, people are going to be frustrated and get angry with governments when they act incompetently, which many of them did. What it doesn't mean is that global elites fabricated it all. But when you combine that frustration with wacky theories on the internet, we've got fertile ground for those theories to breed. And then the WEF says they want to reset the economy, even if a lot of ideas look good, what do you get? People translate that they're aiming at world domination. So, Aluxers, what do you think of the Great Reset and the ideas behind it? Share your thoughts in the comments. And of course, here's your bonus for sticking with us until the end. The Great Reset is also big on paying attention to experts. No surprise when the World Economic Forum is largely composed of experts and invites experts in as speakers. And even if it's become unfashionable to trust experts, for those of us who aren't experts on a given topic, do we really have a better option? True, experts can be paid off to publish sketchy findings. We're not saying it never happens. And sure, experts can make mistakes, they're human. But all things considered, when it comes to choosing between experts and wackos on the internet who believe in reptilians, we think we know who we're gonna go with. Ask an expert, and chances are they'll tell you there's no reason to believe them.